I'm going to talk a little bit past the past and the future or the present, what we're doing presently in Southwest Siberia. Uh, at least what we can talk in uh, uh, this short time. Okay, so I think we know that the, the sea floor, the, the oceanic sea, sea floor is quite young compared to the age of the earth. So this implies that the, the subduction zones have to start uh, systematically in the earth history. Um, this is the Wilson cycle. I don't have to, to go here in detail. It's, it's very important. This is kind of recognized since the, the early days of the tectonics that the conversion of the Atlantic type uh, into Andean types, and we now call them rifted margins and Pacific type margins or Atlantic type margins were really important. This is a sketch from the John Dewey paper, probably the first on, on subduction initiation at Pacific margins. Actually, it was arguing that Trans, uh, passive margins have to a certain at a certain point transform into active margins. Of course, these are 2D uh, sketches and things can get much more complex. Um, so the problem is that since then, um, many works show that it's almost impossible to convert uh, a typical rifted margin into active margin. There are simple no forces uh, to do it, especially in the Atlantic type ocean. Because as oceanic plate cools, um, it becomes thicker uh, and becomes denser, but becomes thick and very strong. And it's really difficult to break a thick plate and to bend it. Even if you break it, then to bend it is not easy. You have a huge bending radius and you need a lot of energy for that. And you don't get that energy from, um, from the, the rich push, okay? So since very early this, Again, I'm saying that this was one of the first papers on the initiation of subduction trenches that uh, uh, Dan McKenzie showed that you needed uh, a convergence. So you need to have a differential velocity at, at the margin. Um, and even in this, this classical paper by Mullen and Phillips on initiation of subduction, um, that's the conclusion, basically. Of course, you can have facilitating mechanisms like serpentinization, thermal, thermal erosion, and I think we should, you know, that's something that the community should invest, investigate further, but it's not easy. So uh, I want to show this because this is where I got inspiration for a lot of my work, just put the laser. Um, so he said that you know, subduction is difficult at continental margins, but he said that if you have a transform fault nearby, nearby a mature complex subduction system, this may facilitate or, and he, 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 there's apparently a few examples in the, in the Pacific and in the in the Cenozoic, while there are not many uh, examples of subduction initiation at passive margin. So, but the thing is, how do you start the subduction zones in a pristine, and by pristine I'm saying an ocean without, so internal ocean without subduction zone? And the Atlantic is a specific case, but, but it's an interesting case because it goes from almost pole to pole. So if you have a supercontinent, it breaks, and then you have an internal ocean that has no uh, subduction zones. And uh, they have to get in or have to start there. So the best thing to do is actually to look at the Atlantic and because it's a, a good example of Atlantic type ocean. And uh, if you look at the Atlantic today, we actually have already two fully developed subduction zones and they actually start quite young in the history of the ocean. They started in the Cretaceous. Because models show that it's it's easier to start subduction in a younger plate. That's the conclusion for the Kluting paper in '84. Uh, so you have the Scott Yard and you have the Western Empires. They seem somehow to be there's controversy, but they seem somehow to be to have formed in close connection with the Pacific subduction zones, and they migrated there by rollback. They still kind of still constrained by continental promontories, I don't have here, but there's another one here. And so, and they are migrating along uh, transform slash fracture zones, okay? And this, I thought, is this a coincidence that you had these two subduction zones getting in the Atlantic by, uh, through this, this mechanism? And then I was, why I thought this was interesting because I was actually studying the Southwest Iberian margin. And uh, people, you know, at the time that I was studying, people started to, to they were discussing if there was a subduction or not in Gibraltar. Uh, and when I looked at this map, I thought, oh, there's a, an arc there and there's a, um, a torn fault. And for those who don't know, we have very high magnitude earthquakes. Like the 1755 was 8.7. 
1969, we had a magnitude 8 earthquake. They were all trust events with tsunamis. So it's like subduction type events. So that's why you know, something was going on there. This is not new at all. Um, I just here, I'm sorry, I'm probably ignoring a huge amount of bibliography, but I don't have time. This is just, I thought there's nice pictures that showed what I wanted to, to, to tell. One is that there was an attempt of subduction initiation in the North. It started there's a small accretionary wedge there, but it, it kind of aborted. Uh, there are evidence of reactivation in the West at the margin. So somehow in the last uh, few million years, subduction was trying to, to kind of localize all around Iberia. Uh, and somehow it seems to be localizing in Southwest Iberia. And that's we, what I'm going to try to show you. And in Southwest Iberia, you actually have two fracture zones uh, between Africa, Africa and Eurasia. Uh, this is the one that's normally called the, the, the plate boundary, and is producing magnitude 8.4 and 7.1 strike slip events. And there's another fracture here to the south that's been producing magnitude 8 earthquakes. This is what just, just in the 20th century, the last century. And then you have this region in which you seem to have this kind of fracture zone. Oh, then, of course, you have the front of the Gibraltar arc. So the Christianary wedge of the Gibraltar subduction zone is already there. Um, and you have these trust faults. This Gorinj Bank is a, a submarine mountain with five kilometers. It's higher than the Mbombla. It's a trust fault. And uh, it was drilled by, by IODP and it's mantle. If you on top of it, it's, it's serpentinized mantle. Um, and you had, of course, the 1755 earthquake, but it was not the only one. You, you had very high magnitude events. Actually, they are in Abyssal Plain, which is quite of strange. But what I wanted to show you here is that these uh, trust faults, they seem to be migrating away from this transform plate boundary uh, along the passive margin. Okay, and that's what I'm going to show you next. This was the, the map I did for my PhD. So I, will, I wanted to, the, the Mediterranean was very well studied. The West Iberian margin was very well studied. And this corner was you know, kind of starting to be studied. Uh, but uh, there was a lot of things, but it, it's a huge complex area. So I'm just putting it the most, it's a sketch. It's a simplified sketch of the fault. So, and the, in white, you have this, the transform plate boundary, you have the Christianary wedge. And what was interesting and special for here on, on this rifted margins is that you have a, tip, a rifted margin and a little bit hyperextended in places because you have a serpent, serpentinized uh, region. But you still, you see some of the, of the rift faults, the normal faults, like here, the Pareto de Sousa. Uh, this is a, a normal fault, rift normal fault, and that's another one, that this one is still a normal fault today. It's active. It's still moving a little bit today. And these ones are fully reactivated. And by, what I mean by fully reactivated is when you look at the profile, and this is uh, along this Marquês de Pombal, you see that you have the, the rifted structures. You can see that the, this was a normal fault because just by the, the, the thickening to, in this side, uh, this is thicker than, than mesozoic units are thicker on the left side. Uh, and uh, these normal faults, and some of these normal faults, you really have like, you see a clear uh, crystal trust. Uh, Okay, and this is the, the Gorinj Bank, just to give you an example, it's, it, you see that all the sediments are folded uh, like that. Um, so this is also a clear evidence that the margin is being reactivated. There's been a huge discussion if there's already subduction going on or not. And we recently have done a, a, a study with tomography, and this was based on, on 20 OBSs that were on the seafloor. And we actually see below this uh, flat abyssal plane, you see like an anomaly, uh, you have in, just on top of this anomaly, you have this earthquakes, this cluster, this cluster was registered by OBS, so we know they are there, the location is very good. And you had this 1969 earthquake, which was a magnitude uh, eight earthquake. Okay, And so there's maybe something there. Uh, this will be a, a presentation on its own. So we have a preprint because we have some models on this. Um, that we think that uh, there's, you know, there's little, we call it the lamination of oceanic lithosphere, because you see that the lithospheric mantle seems to be detaching from the crust. That's why the, you still have the abyssal plane very uh, flat. Uh, but yeah, 
if you are interested, uh, go there. So, and but there's the big elephant in the room, of course, which is we also have, and you actually see here, you have a slab there, which is the, the Gibraltar slab. Uh, it still so seems to be ten minutes now. Okay, thank you. You still seems to be connected to the surface because the accretionary wedge here and its thicker part is actually 15 kilometers. Okay, it's a 15 kilometers uh, package of sediments, and you don't have like huge rebound like you would expect if the, the slab was completely detached. So yeah, the slab may be detaching, but still somehow to be there. And people say that it slowed down in the last two million years, so it's stopping and it's, go it's going to die. And, um, and we actually thought that, yeah, that it makes sense. Um, but we wanted to, anyway, to try to understand if this slab had any impact because what were, sorry, let's go back. I just wanted to understand if this subduction zone here will somehow could be forcing like this convergence there. So the combination of Africa moving a little bit to the north and the Gibraltar subduction zone and the Gibraltar arc, this is collisional arc, could kind of be forcing the, the kind of convergence in that location. Uh, because as we just saw in the, in the previous uh, presentation, we need a little bit of convergence. Here we have. So, and this is just for those who don't know, this is how you get to the Gibraltar arc. So there was actually interesting that this subduction zone started to retreat when the, the collisions happened in the Himalaya. And if the Africa and Iberia were not converging, this subduction zone will probably have just migrated to the Atlantic. But it's kind of now a little bit stuck there. And what we want to know, or what kind of question that you can ask me, I made this question like, 20 years ago when Mark andre Gucci published, published his paper in 2002, it was a geology paper defending that Gibraltar subduction was still active. So I just run some models. And uh, I'm sorry, the ones that have been in EGU maybe already saw these models. So we just start with a very simple slab dipping to the Northwest. Uh, and we just, uh, we have some continental blocks actually very similar to the ones that uh, uh, Hosenbaum uh, draw 20 years ago. And um, it just, there's only gravity, so no push. Africa, is, Africa moves a little bit to the north because of the, of the slab pool, but then it, it, um, there is no kinematic impose. And so you see that the slab goes down, the blocks collide here. So you have the lamination, the lamination, the tear propagates there. You have like the two step folds. It's interesting to see the formation of the beddings and of the reef. We kind of form like a, something that could correspond to a transalburan shear zone, because there's a shear zone in there. And what we see, this is 30 million years. We started 30 million years ago, because so then it, this will be present day. So this is where things are at present day. So the timings are working well. And everything slows down, really slows down. And you have a lot of already like continent, continent collision here. Though, Interesting, and we were expecting, we wanted to understand what was going on there, but actually after a few million years, subduction manages to, to propagate. And it propagates a little bit along in ocean wards and, and along the, the margins. So, and we didn't have time to run more, but we want to run more, but you can still see here that subduction at a certain point starts to propagate. Uh, this is just another view since I, I still have two more minutes. Yes, sir. Uh, so this is from the Northeast. So you see the slab how much turns around. It's interesting that the batics completely rotate. That's actually nice in, in according to the, to the magnetic uh, data. And you're just, again, you see, because now the slab has to, you have a narrow slab, the interesting thing is that the slab is narrow and then it's, it's narrowing. So it, it never has enough pull to actually induce break off, but he has enough pull to start bending the Atlantic lithosphere. And it takes a while. And we don't have weak zones. If we put a weak zone, it will be much easier. So that's something that we want to do next. Have a weak zone on the passive margin and have an assault Gibraltar fracture zone that will probably work as a, a stress guide. So this is a this is a situation in which it's actually really difficult to propagate the subduction. And it, even in that situation, it goes. And 
and just the last one. So seeing now we are in the mantle, looking from the north to the south, slab coming our way, detached there, and then you have the, the rollback. Actually, it has to go quite fast in the beginning because you have all these things pulling down. And then here you see it slows down because now you have a very small slab that is trying to pull all the Atlantic. And the Atlantic doesn't want to go, of course. But um, yeah, this is 30 million years, so we are a little bit uh, past the present day. And around uh, 50 million years, we actually run a lot of time steps, sorry. We have 4,000 time steps because I, we wanted to have a nice movie. Um, and yeah, and now we see that the, it's starting to pull the, the Atlantic. Anyway, so I just wanted to, to, to say that, you know, like uh, maybe one mechanism and uh, in the other in the other side of the Atlantic, in, in this situation, you somehow had like a polarity reversal, and this polarity reversal somehow caused the initiation of a subduction on the Atlantic side that was a passive margin. Uh, the Mediterranean is a little bit different. It seems like to be more like a kind of direct propagation, if our model is correct. If the Gibraltar subduction dies, you know, there's still already something going on there that may continue. Anyway, I just wanted to, to say that uh, defend this perspective that the three dimensional three dimensionality are important and sometimes subduction zones may come from another place, right? And migrate and evasion and introduction. Because if you think like even the Tethian Ocean, uh, oceans barely are barely completely isolated or completely surrounded by passive margin. There will always be a subduction zone that will manage to, to, to squeeze in. And we may just seeing that. So I just, uh, and I'll stop here. I think that's my last slide. Thank you, Joao. We have time for one quick question. Anyone just type it in the chat, raise your hand. Yeah, uh, may I ask a question? Yes, please. Yeah, and uh, I, I, saw, I saw that in the tectonic map to the west of this uh, trench, you have several uh, thrust faults, right? And you, you think the retreating subduction slab is going to push this force because the general the slab pull will, will you know induce uh, extension environment. Yeah, that's why it's in the corner. I think that's why it's in the corner. That's what I. Um, okay. You see, like the the corner of Iberia will work as an indented. Yeah, yeah. How when a trench is retreating, how it's going to push the the, the back. Yeah, it's a kind of, you know, it's not easy to understand. <laughs> no, no, you are completely right. Mm -hmm. And maybe we were completely wrong when you're thinking. But, uh, okay, and I maybe just, where are you? I lost your, okay, sorry. Okay, so. One possibility that we thought is that the, the subduction yeah. is pulling the, the Atlantic and this part of the, this will be an extension of course, but is being pulled or being tensioned, but is being pulled in that direction. And if you have this corner here, this part will go against the continent, right? That was a naive uh, rethinking. Uh, the other thing it can be, would be like, if you have Africa, then you could have a little bit of lateral expulsion of the of the Betics and the reef, and that could induce a force, but uh, it will be like at the crystal level. But we, we may be completely wrong because the models are actually showing something completely different. So, but may, they are two different problems. That, that's why I separated them. I think we first have to understand this and then have to first understand that and then have models that try to combine both. But uh, we are not there yet to try to have one because you can have one complex model that reproduces what we want, but then we don't understand it. So we're doing step by step. And that's the, the idea. Okay, thanks.